start by using a retractor system, either some physical assistance or a Lone Star Retractor APS. You then mark in the mid urethra and then mark at the level of the clitoris right on the curl fold beneath the adductor longus. You can see me doing it here. I go on the opposite side also and do a similar marking. Once I've marked a few patients, I won't have to do it in the future because I'll instinctively know where to put my incisions. Now I'm going to do some hydro dissection and help with containment of my bleeding. I'm using corpusent marcaine with epinephrine here and I inject it right underneath the skin, underneath the vaginal mucosa, on the left and on the right side. I want some hydro dissection here also so that dissection is easy and there's help with hemostasis. Next I'm going to inject in the curl fold where my markings are so that I can get some good pain control. I do some on the left and then I do some on the right. I do it straight in, 45 degrees down, and straight down. I can do these procedures in the office if I needed to under local anesthetic and certainly when the patient wakes up she will not have any pain because of this. Next we do a mid-urethral incision. It's about a centimeter and a half because the mesh itself is 1.1 centimeter. If you needed to you can do a two centimeter incision straight down vertically. Once I've made my incision, I'll grasp the edges shown here with a T-clamp. Then I use my Metzenbaum scissors to dissect and reach right beneath the pubic ramus on the patient's left side. I then put my smallest finger and see if I can reach the bottom edge of the pubic ramus. I switch on over to the opposite side and dissect the same way. And then I'll reach again with my smallest finger. Usually it's my little pinky. You can use your index finger if you wanted to but I try to keep the footprint as small as possible so that I don't have a big track. Since I don't have an assistant, I want to use my Lone Star Retractor to give me as much efficiency as possible. You can see here I'm using the yellow hooks to try to pull the edges back so I can see where my mid urethra is when I put my sling. In this clip, you'll see me developing the mid urethra just a bit more. I do this so that my sling or my mesh lays quite flat and it's not folded over. I try to get this area as flat as possible. In this part of the video you'll see me place my left index finger into the tunnel and then my right hand holds the transobturator needle. My left hand will push the needle through the obturator space and then my right hand slides up and I don't use the grasper the handle but I actually put it on the curve and I work it through so that my left index finger will feel the tip as I bring the tip out. I want to be as high up on the pubic arch as possible so that I'm not down in the urethrovesical junction. Once I have the eye of the introducer needle available, I'll put the end of the omnisure through the eye of the needle, pull it through and have about five centimeters pulled out or longer and then I'll reverse turn the transobturator needle and pull out the sling through the groin. Here you can see it being pulled out. Then I'll go ahead and secure the mesh so it doesn't get wet and you see me here placing it right on the retractor. The next thing you want to do is check the sulcus and make sure you have no buttonholing. Next we're working on the patient's right side. My right index finger is in the tunnel. My left hand holds the needle and my right thumb has just pushed through the obturator needle through the space and my right index finger is looking for the needle. Here's the needle as it comes out through the vaginal incision. And again, I'm not torquing the, the needle through with the handle. Here's the needle and I'm going to place the end of the Omnisure sling through the eye of the needle and grasp it when it's, once it's through. You want about five centimeters or slightly more pulled through before you reverse turn the, the handle of the obturator needle. Go ahead and stabilize the middle of the mesh or the sling so it doesn't get wet as you reverse turn the introducer needle. Next I'm going to hold the sling with my thumb and index finger and try to lay it in as flat as possible. I'm going to want to put a 28 French male dilator shown here or a 10 Hagar dilator or any device you want to use as a spacing device to prevent over tensioning. What I'll do next is adjust the tension on the sling. 
I'll start on one side and then work to the other side. Try to feel one pop on the left and then one pop on the right and just move on down. Next, you want to make sure that the mesh is laying flat. Here I'm checking that it's laying flat and if needed, I'll go ahead and put one or two sutures to keep it flat. You also want to make sure that there's no tension or you're tension free. Once you have your tensioning just right, you can close the incision with either interrupted or running suture. I prefer to do cystoscopy after all slings. I use a 70 degree cystoscope. At the very end of the procedure, go ahead and give some tension on the sling itself and cut it beneath the skin level. Make sure you have no smart fix nodules beneath the skin. Here it is on the right side. You can choose to leave the incision by itself and let it close or you can put skin glue or steri strips. And we're done.